So my name is Rumi Daniels, and I welcome us today to day two of our annual planning, goal setting, and reflection webinar. I am hoping that we can go a step further today to talk about the meat of our sessions, which are very, very crucial to our walk, our journey, our progress in 2024 and beyond. It's one thing to set goals. It's another to have the sustainability, the tenacity, the grit, the staying power, the discipline to achieve those results. Um, so I asked us why we have failed goals. One of the reasons why we have failed goals for starters, is the inability to plan properly. Poor planning. Poor planning. Once the planning cycle is bad. But you see, let me be fair and let me be frank. Some of us agree here that we've achieved results of some sorts over time in the past, even when we didn't set results. I mean, goals rather. And the reason that is, is because a man who has no goals but is ruthlessly pursuing anything <laughs> will actually succeed better than a man who has the finest plans but yet has no ability to pursue them. The only problem with running around without goals is that you don't even know when you are a success. So anything that happens is just a success for you or for me. So the thing is, when goals have been properly set and then it is met with the commensurate execution strategy, then we can say we are succeeding on our journeys. And over time, some people have stopped setting goals because they've set goals and it looks as if they never met them. On a scale of 1 to 10, we asked ourselves, how many of us have achieved our goals? And we had... Responses like three and so on. And so, so for some people, it's discouraging. But the encouragement is never get discouraged. It's better to have the goals and then you've tried and it looks like you never got there. But you have a discipline already. All right? One of the reasons we said already why we must set goals is because it's a habit. It's a habit of the creator of the heavens and the earth, actually. Write down. Make it plain. Write down. Make it plain. These things I have shown you, write them down. You'll see that over and again in the Holy Book. And for those of us from other faiths, I'm sure that our faith still encourages us to write as well. All right? It's a very important discipline. So it is very, very important. In any case, we're talking ruthless execution tonight. How do we even begin to commit ourselves to the discipline of, the, of execution? How do we begin to ensure that we succeed on our, you know, on our journey? One very important thing I love to start with this evening is to inform us that it's very important to accomplish it, accomplish our goals. Very, very important. And the feelings are endless. The, I, like I said yesterday, I want to use some, some quotes from the Holy Book, right? So even if you are not, um, you know, I'm one who reads the Holy Book, please just, you can take the principles and leave the, you know, scriptural inscriptions out, if that's okay with you. But for some of us, I will encourage you to follow through and read some of those things on your own. I'm going to put some up there. Very crucial. Right, and I'll show you um why. Why is it why is it important to accomplish our goals? Why is it important? But before then, I like for you to understand that everyone who if you're an employer of labor in this room, you know that it's very important for people to take for you know into consideration the goals of your organization. Right? Um, my wife and I have you know, a, a handy amount of people on our payroll. Some people do their jobs well and some don't. 
and the people who don't do their jobs well don't necessarily you know stay in our hearts in fact just a few days ago i think about 14 hours ago we had to lay off two people all right that's the third person this year that we have to let go when we look through the system who are we letting go at the end of the year all right we didn't have to think twice especially for one of them one of them was quite difficult but the other was it was a no-brainer why because the person even though the person had so much promise had so much what you would call gra gra you know activity the person did not deliver and over and again the key performance indicators that were set with this person for this person those deliverables were not met and over and again all right my wife will call on such a person sit with them I will call on such a person. In fact, took my time to ensure that this person were trained, but they came short over and again on those key performance indicators. So anybody who is not doing well, even the Almighty checks on them to see if they are doing well and then, you know, and pass them to deliver results. Productivity is on the mind of everyone. So it is important to accomplish goals. It is important. Very important, actually. Very important. All right? See how we are informed to let our light so shine. You know, to let it so shine. Not, not a little. Let it shine very well. All right? That's, that's an instruction. Let your light so shine. You can't be walking somewhere and say, because people will be talking about you, you don't want to do your best. I've seen people who say they will not deliver their best because they don't want other people to talk about them. No, you are instructed to let your light so shine. I like to say that again. You are instructed, you are commanded, you are instructed, you are commanded. I, we are all instructed to let our light so shine. All right? We live in a world where some people could be envious out of envy, make true foolish statements into the air, you know, and it can be quite discouraging to have people, you know, begin to say things like, uh, is the company your own? Is it your father's company? Will you kill yourself? Uh, why are you going the extra mile? Uh, they're not paying you that much and all of that. I, I would rather have people say such things to me than be a mediocre because I'm trying to please anybody else. No. In trying to be an excellent person, the only person I need to compete with is myself. Am I doing better than I did last week? If I am, then better. Whatever anybody else is saying is left to them. Sometimes, and even dare to say, you can even be working for a boss that does not appreciate what you are doing. It doesn't matter. Let your light so shine. Let your light so shine. Don't bother. All right. Don't bother about what anybody is saying to you. And this is key. I am in the HR space. I do these trainings consistently over the years. I, I know what I see. I see things that are quite very difficult. Interestingly, I have seen places where it is the boss that was even saying, don't, don't do too much. You know, and so that that's that's quite interesting. But let your light so shine. In 2024, I'd like for you to declare wherever you are, I will let my light shine. Irrespective of where I am, irrespective of what I'm doing, I'll let my light shine. All right? My light will shine so much. And why must we accomplish our goals? All right? Number one, the creator wants us to succeed. All right? I wish above all things that you prosper. That's his, that's his desire. All right? Secondly, organizations need us to, su to succeed. All right? We organizations need us to succeed. It doesn't matter whether it's a, whether it's a profit or non-profit. Our families need us to succeed. Our world needs us to succeed. The Holy Book clearly says it. The annex expectation of the sons of the earth, you know, is the manifestation of us. This is important. So it's important that we succeed, all right, at our goals. It's not just important, enough to write it down. We must succeed at, at it, all right? We all owe it to ourselves to succeed. That's another reason. I owe it to myself to succeed. I owe it to myself to succeed. All right? Succeeding at my goals is something that I owe myself. Oh.
also. All right. Of course, still knowing fully well who I am, I am made of more. Therefore, it is it is my destiny to succeed. And the Holy Book clearly says it as well, that if I fail in the day of trouble, then the, there was nothing much to me in the first instance. It says my strength is little. So in this economy, people say in this Buari economy, in now in this Tinubu economy, there are all manner of excuses. All right. But one of the things we need to remember and understand is that many of the world's biggest and greatest companies were better in recessions. All right. Were better in recessions. I said there's one more, there's one more session that I would love to run tomorrow, very briefly as well, around this time tomorrow as well. It doesn't matter how many people are joining, but I can assure you we're recording. So the recordings will be dropped in the, you know, with for everyone who is connected to this already. So it's important to know. And then off as well, it brings you fulfillment. All right. Succeeding on your goals bring you success fulfillment there's nothing like seeing you succeed all right there's nothing like getting to the point where you've achieved your goal it brings satisfaction all right it brings reward the reward of success is with those that succeed at their goals i'll say that again the reward of success is with those who succeed at their goals the Holy Book clearly says, it says, for the joy that was set before him, he endured hardness, hardship, he endured pain and death, all right? No matter what the difficulties are on our part, we have to endure the discipline of execution because of the ultimate goal of reward. And until we've laid certain things, you remember yesterday we asked ourselves, what things must I stop? In other words, what things must I kill? What things must I start? In other words, what things must I give life? And then what things must I continue? These three things are in the domain of goal setting. Until we've gotten to that point where we know what we need to starve and kill, what we need to give life and continue, and what we need to start, then we're not ready to fully accomplish our goals. All right? So goal setting is not enough. All right? It is not enough to set goals. It is not enough to set goals. By the way, I need to recommend, please, everyone listening to me or who will be listening to me after now, I encourage you to buy a very little notebook, a 2A notebook. Don't set your goals in a general notebook where you always write everything else. No. Let's the notebook be bought, little one, right 2024, 20, right before it. Or I make it a culture to get a new one every year so that your thoughts and ideas, your strategies and plans for that year can keep going in there. You can be updating and upgrading. So please, by tomorrow, I trust, if you can get one tonight, if you have one, please do so. I have a new note somewhere around your house that is hanging there brand it to 2024 and keep it. It is your personal and private property. That property can only be shared with people who are accountability partners in your life. And I'll talk about that later. All right. But please start with the discipline. Remember one of the principles of goal setting we talked about in our previous session is that goals must be written. They must not just be in our brain, in our head. All right. They must be written. It's a major principle that allows for, you know, um, goal setting, all right? So, so here we are following through on ruthless execution, ruthless execution. This is a most ruthless execution of our goals. So it's not a, it's not it's not enough to set goals. It is important to have ruthless execution. I'm I'm very deliberate about those words, use of words, ruthless execution of goals. Ruthless. All right, aggressive, daring, audacious. 
ruthless, 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 no excuse kind of execution. All right, zero tolerance for excuses. Okay, and it's a mindset. It begins with knowing fully well that I win, I win, I win. Now, this is not just about killing somebody or drawing somebody down, but in a dog eat dog world, in an environment where people are, some of them are not even mindful of what you want to do with your life. I'm telling you, you must understand that you have to have a winning mentality that says, I can do. I can accomplish, not I can self. I will and I must. I will, I must. I can afford to fail. In fact, you must be saying that mentality must be alive. Wherever you are tonight, I want you to say that to yourself. Rume Daniels, I can't afford to fail. You can't afford to fail. You can't afford to fail. There's too much line and connected to the reasons why you must succeed. All right? So this is very, very important. Also, I like to re remind us of the fact that we succeed on our journey of goals daily. And the process is more important than the results. Accomplishing your goals is not as important as who you have become at the end of the process. Who you are becoming every day is more important than, I'll say that, I want to say that again, I want it to sink. Please declare with me where you are, who I am becoming on the process of execution is more important than the outcome of the execution. The, in other words, the result, my result is not as important as the process. Which I said that you know to us in the previous recording. You are supposed to do something every day. For instance, you want to read five chapters of a book every day and you decide to abandon it Monday to Friday and you read 30 chapters on Saturday. Yeah, it seems like you accomplished your goal for that week, but you have cheated and the process was not followed. So that tells you that the discipline of execution was not practiced. I like you to understand that it is more important to practice because while you are working on your goals, you are becoming a better person the process is working on you i like you to say it to yourself the process is working on me all right the process is working on me if i choose to wake up every day if i say i want to wake up every day by 5 a.m it's a process if i say i want to take a walk every day and do a 30 minutes workout every day it's a process so that journey is more important than the outcome i like that to, to sing all right i like that to sing I like that to sing. So say with me wherever we are, every day and in every way, I am getting better and better. I like for you to say to yourself, I Rune Daniels, every day and in every way in 2024, I am getting better and better. Why? Because the process, daily process, the daily walk, the daily journey is more important than the outcome that I eventually get. I like you to write it down in your notes. Who I am becoming is more important than what I am achieving. Who I am becoming is more important than what I am achieving. I'll tell you why. Because when you become a better person, you will naturally produce the results without struggling. What we're struggling to, to set for 2024 now, new habits we're trying to start. By, the, by some time in 2024, we will not need to be, you know, needing accountability partners anymore. It could just become a habit. In fact, by the time we're setting some goals in the next couple of years, by 2025 goal setting, there'll be some goals we'll not be setting anymore. It won't, it won't, it won't be needed anymore. We'd have scaled up to more important things. So right now, the journey is not about how much money I want to make. It's not, it's not just about I want to buy a car. It's not just about I want to build a house. It's not just about, I want to get promotion. It's not just about, I want to make a million dollars. No, 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 no. The most important thing by this time next year will be, who have I become? Who have I become? Who have I become? Because success is who you are, not what you have. Success, real success, sustainable success is who you are, 
not what you have. All right. And as you become, then it becomes easy to do. It becomes easy to deliver results. All right. Becomes very, very easy to deliver results. It becomes very easy to deliver results. As we go into the coming year, one of the things we must see is possibilities. When someone takes a look at this year and say it has been one of the worst years, one of the most difficult years, must also be able to realize that this also is probably one of the best years. For me, it was both. One of the toughest years I've lived in my entire marital life. All right? One of the best years as well in terms of the capacity that I have developed, in terms of the network and the quality of the things I have you know, achieved. Yet, still one of the most challenging. It's a double-edged sword. So when you're looking at the year and telling yourself that the year was a bad year, you need to understand that people who literally get the most out of a given year are the ones who will see the opportunities out of everything. So is the year going to be less tougher next year? I don't know. But instead of hoping for that, I think one of the most important things is that we build capacity to fully, fully accomplish our goals despite the happenings around us. So we understand that goals are not achieved in a day. They are achieved daily. They are achieved daily. So there's something I'm going to say about this, and I want us to, especially mindful of the fact that some people's new resolution, they have a burnout very quickly. By the first quarter of the year, they are already gone. So that that does not happen to us in the coming year, i like to make a quick suggestion, all right? That, for instance, you are here, you want to say, um, certain, like, like if you want to do talk about your health, there are certain goals that you know you can literally create a 21-day, 30-day, 60-day habit around, all right? Now, for someone who wants to save money every single month, all right? you know you have to wait on the end of the month if you're a salary earner to earn an your income and then um, save, like we agreed, 10% of your salary, all right? Or if you're an entrepreneur whose income comes in handy every time, you want to build a savings culture as an autopilot mood, all right? So what I'm saying is that there are certain goals that would have been achieved even long before the year is over, even long before the year is over, certain goals would have been achieved, right? And that's what I just want to, to draw your attention to, all right? So every day you want to focus on developing a healthy habit, a healthy habit. Anyway, part of the habit will be to write down our monthly goals, our weekly to do and our daily to do. So how is that done, all right? So you can see that there. You do weekly. Today is Sunday. By Saturday evening, you've already written goals for Sunday. A, week, a new week does not start on Monday. It starts on Sunday. So the best time to do a weekly review is on Friday and Saturday. The best time to make plans for the new week is on Friday and Saturday, all right? So that by month, by Sunday, you've already, just like the best time to set goals for 2024 is now. It's not January. You don't start doing this in January. You start now. You start now. You start now. All right? Because by January 1st, if, for instance, you have a routine for the entire year and your new year starts on January 1st, then already January 1st is already too late to start setting goals. It's the same thing for weekly goals. All right? So don't crowd your list. Make it as easy as possible, as specific as possible. And then, of course, I've talked about review. Review your daily progress at the end of the day. Please, don't, don't get tired of this. Don't get tired of this. Whatever you couldn't accomplish, tick it and let it, you know, something that needs to move on. You know, so you look at that. Look at that list right there at the bottom there. I wrote the word routine. Don't get tired of routine because there are some of us, especially those of us who are sanguines very outgoing social people like myself. We don't like routine. We don't like anything that looks like it's, it's getting boring. We don't like it. But you must understand, the world runs on routines. Somebody say, ah, everything is boring. I said, then it means the creator is boring. 
because he made the sun to rise every day and the sun to go down in the evening, the moon to come at night, and then for the moon to go down. And our world is predictable. The creator doesn't get to the point where all of a sudden he now says, I am tired of the way the world is. Let the sun take a break today. Let everything go chaotic. Let me enjoy some, some I, I'm just restless. I, I need some change. He doesn't do that. And we are made in his image. So for those of us who don't like routines, who don't like, all of a sudden we say, ah, it's boring, it's boring. Ah, it's boring. I don't like it. Then you must understand that you don't have that luxury. Please say it with me, I don't have that luxury. All right? The discipline of routine is a very crucial part of execution. I will say that again. The discipline of a routine life is a, put, a crucial part of execution. Don't get weary of doing good or working on your, of, on, on your goals. And then, of course, in terms of execution, we must learn, you know, this particular very crucial part of our lives. We must understand that we must know the difference between what is urgent, not urgent, important, and not important. That one I cannot teach right about now. That's time management. In other words, we need to go and master time management. We must work with priority, all right? What is important is really urgent, and what is urgent is really important. We need to master that, all right? Know that the, whatever we need to do now, 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 which is urgent and important, those things we need to reduce as much as possible. The part of the, what is important and, and not urgent, we need to learn how to deal with that. Decide when to do this one know what to delegate, and then we need to know what we need to delete, all right, from our lives. So someone says, time flies, it is left for us to be the pilot, okay? It's left for us to be the pilot. That's time management. Speaking of time management in the new year, if you look back at 2023, you realize that one of the biggest time wasters, all right, was our phone. And one of the principles of execution is that we need to eliminate distractions and time wasters. And time wasters are on our phone. We have that. We know social media, very, very massive time waster right there. All right? A lot. All right? It's good for to do movies when we are, but we need to understand that movies can also be a huge time waster. So you see how big the problem is. You look at that. 55% of distractions in the workplace are caused by cell phones. Some five percent of employees or uh, employers say that more than two hundred two hours plus of their time every day is lost due to distractions based on time zone. All right, look at this one here. All right, time phone. I mean, we, we, waste from phones. All right, cell phone, texting, internet, social media, email, and this this, this is quite old. And you can see very reliable statistics from CNBC. Very very reliable statistics right there. The time wasting on our phones is huge. If we can cop that, we're going to have a whole lot. Somebody says, I want to write a book. I don't have time. But you realize that if you can take out some social media time, you can write a book. All right. So as you plan for the new year, literally work on what you're going to need to knock out in terms of time wasting. Some other time wasters, uh, both internal and external time wasters, Extra time wasters include our visitors, too many meetings, paper, telephone, you know, travels. I've learned that for me, travel is not a time waster. I have my diary. I have my books. I enjoy traveling. Traveling is one of the times when I have, you know, ideas. I, I think I enjoy traveling. So if it works for you that way, and that's because I'm a sanguine, I know myself. You must know yourself. But for some people, they don't like it. So it's a time waster for them. All right? Internal time wasters within your system, poor communication, all right, procrastination, and you can see the list goes on like that. Poor prioritizing, poor planning, actually. All right? It's a huge, huge one. And I said this earlier, we must say no to excuses. Zero tolerance for excuses. Okay? Zero tolerance for excuses. All right, let me... Um, do something for a minute or so.